Thanks for watching City Council Comments. I'm Steve Erickson along with Council Member Bill Kicker. Today we're talking about both the September 1st and our September 15th City Council meetings. Thanks for coming in today. Well, thanks for having me. We kind of got everything uh, out of the way here in the first half of September. Yes, we did. We did, definitely. It's kind of weird because I feel like we normally have a council meeting after kind of Labor Day. You know, but this year with it being so late, we, we had our first meeting on exactly September 1st. Right, right. It was an early start. So, yeah, we got a lot of September left and we're done with our meetings. Yeah, and hopefully the weather is kind of warmed up a little now, too, so it stays nice. That would be nice. Uh, <laughs> so we can enjoy a little bit of it. At least a few more weeks. Yep, for sure. All right, let's jump into things here. Uh, we're going right. to start off by talking about our uh, the items on our September 15th meeting. One of the first there, we had some Girl Scouts in for Girl Scouts is a Force for Good week. Yeah, proclamation. right. So it was a proclamation um, and uh, basically in the proclamation, it was stated, it talked a lot about uh, the Girl Scouts, an organization that started in 1912 mm -hmm. and um, just how, how good of an organization it's been for young girls to participate in, to gain confidence, to learn leadership skills, and, and then also to give back to their community. So, uh, and as in the proclamation, as it stated, their giving back to their community was helping out during this pandemic where they created and distributed masks um, mm -hmm. and donated cookies for essential workers. So they've done a really nice job of, of, of donating back to their, or giving back to their community. So um, great organization and uh, nice to have them, uh, you know, there in front of us. Uh, we, during this pandemic, we haven't had a lot of that, so it was kind of nice to see organizations coming back in, um, you know, and, and getting their opportunity to, you know, to, to show what they do, to show what they're uh, giving back to the community. Yeah, I was thinking that when they were there, like if they were going to come up and introduce themselves, usually we pass a microphone, which obviously can't do in COVID times, but it right. was nice to have them up to the uh, public podium when they yep. were able to introduce themselves, and they also uh, helped lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Absolutely, yep. Yep. Yeah. It was a yeah a nice event. Uh, very nice to have the Girl Scouts and yeah. uh, and they left us some cookies. They weren't the traditional Girl Scout cookies. They have a new variety and they were more like a mint. But boy, were they good. They were good. You, yeah. You yeah. Had that to, yeah. Right. I made sure I grabbed one of those. You, you so, had to yeah. grab one. Someone said that behind the scenes. They're like, <laughs> did they bring the cookies? And then they actually pulled out. They weren't the actual cookies, but right, right. Yeah. They were. Yeah. It came in a, in a tin. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, it was more like a mint. But yeah. excellent. Yeah, All right, they might have to start selling those. Yeah. All right, council uh, adopted a resolution accepting donations. Uh, this was kind of for the fire department, correct? This is for the fire department, yep. Um, they received a grant and two, don two donations. The grant was from Centerpoint Energy for uh, $2,500. And then uh, um, Bauer Services uh, gave them a donation of $1,000 and $850 from the Coon Rapids Fire Department Community Fund. And these were to purchase stovetop fire stops. These are devices that they, uh, that they put in above the, um, above the stovetops of multifamily units. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, there's been, in the last few years, the fire department has noted that um, as far as property damage is concerned, these have been fire, stovetop fires have been the highest contributor yeah. to, to that damage. So these automatically go off if there is a fire that's out of control on your stovetop and distinguish the fire or yeah. extinguish the fire. Yeah, pretty cool. We've done some stories on them and just to see how they work. And, yeah. you know, there's obviously a lot of folks live in a multi-unit building. So Absolutely. To, to be able to contain the fire to the one unit is very important. Yep. yep. Not letting it get out of control. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's YouTube videos you can go out and, and, and view that too, yeah. just where you can actually watch it. The mayor was talking about that. So Yeah. All right. Council adopted a resolution uh, establishing a new polling location for Precinct 5-4. And I found this interesting because we actually moved them to a different location for the primary, and now we're kind of moving them back to their rightful location. Exactly, yep. So they originally were at um, the five Ward 5, Precinct 4, was originally at the Emma B. Howe uh, YMCA yeah. Um, previous to the, the primary, but during the primary because of COVID, um, Emma B. Howe YMCA wasn't able to, to house them there, or to, to, so we couldn't utilize that. Um, but yep, they're moving them back. Uh, 
one location, um, the, the Spirit of Grace Church is not large enough for two locations. General, general election yeah. is going to have a, a lot more people showing up for it, obviously. Um, so um, moving it back, uh, it's my understanding that there will be a notice sent out to those residents that vote at Emma B. Howe for um, Ward 5, Precinct 4, uh, to let them know of the change. Okay, yeah, certainly in a presidential election, there's going to be a lot of people out voting, so yep. we need the space to do that. Absolutely, and and, and especially during the the pandemic, yeah. um, much more space is needed, so yeah. um, things are a little more spread out. All right, council uh, adopted an ordinance uh, adopting the 2020 Minnesota State Building Codes. This just puts us sort of in compliance with the, the new state building codes. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, something that the you know the state goes out and, and they update their codes, mm -hmm. and then municipalities will follow and yeah. and, um, and and adopt those um, state codes. And it, it, I just wanted to uh, mention that Greg Brady, the chief building of, uh, official, has had put together um, at the request of um, Councilmember Demmer. He, mm -hmm. Councilmember Demmer, wanted to know. You know, there's a lot of information when you go through this to see the changes and was interested in those changes that may um, may have a cost to building. Yeah. Uh, and so um, so Greg Brady had put together a really nice summary of that information mm -hmm. and just wanted to make sure people are aware of the fact that, uh, you know, all the information that we get uh, is information that they can look at. So they can go online yep. and uh, look up the agenda. All of that information is there, all of the same packet of data that we have. Uh, is available to the residents so they can go out and view this summary that Greg Brady has put together if they're interested in seeing, you know, a, a fairly concise, just right. a three-pager on, on this information. So I just wanted to note, he did a nice job on putting that together uh, and uh, it's available for others to view. All right, but as far as I understand it, there's no major changes to no talk about? No major changes, no, nothing, no, nothing major at all. And most, most of the changes that did, that are, are more upfront costs, yeah. but on the back end, they will save money, you know, like in energy costs, uh, yeah. uh, more insulation required, but that's, uh, you know, the, the uh, energy cost for their bills, so uh, okay. that offsets those. And some of this is stuff with home builders have to know and, yeah, absolutely. and all that kind of stuff, not... We don't always, as citizens or homeowners, have the general knowledge of what, <laughs> right. what's required. Right, so. right, right, exactly. Yep. All right. Council adopted two resolutions uh, regarding appeal miscellaneous assessments. Yeah, so I, I, I like to mention um, this just because I like to recognize the Board of Adjustment and Appeals at the difficult job that they have. Mm -hmm. Uh, when people appeal, we have a program where, where we, we have citations um, for residents that, um, that aren't meeting certain requirements. Uh, you know, often it, it started out really we'd see a lot more um, uh, grass too long or right. uh, uh, outdoor storage of garbage, junk, um, whatever, wood piles, things like that, or cars um, that weren't kept up with the, the tabs. Mm -hmm. you know, so different things like this. Um, this particular time around, we saw more of um, citations on landlords who weren't getting their rental license. And, and so um, just important to, to reiterate the, the importance of, if you're a landlord in Coon Rapids, you need to have a rental license. Yeah. And uh, there's other programs that you have to go through um, that are educational that really can help out landlords um, and help out the city as well. Right. Um, so it's a real good partnership there. Um, but it's important for residents who are landlords or landlords to know that they need to get licenses. So Right, because they're the ones that get the notifications if there's an issue and all of that too. Absolutely. Right, the renter's not the person responsible for if the lawn's too long or right. Right. those types of things right. that would that, fall onto the would, landlord. That would fall onto the landlord, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay, and they're registered, if they're registered in the city and all that, they get should get all those notices. Yes, absolutely, yep. Okay, so basically uh, this hearing that the Board of Adjustment and Appeals does, they kind of listen, people appeal them, and then they make a decision they, whether to kind of overturn it or keep it as Absolutely, is. absolutely, and, and they do such a good job. They're, I mean, they're very conscientious, they're, they're very respectful. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it, what they do is very difficult, um, yeah. and, but they do a real good job of it. So um, there were a few that, that they, you know, a number that they affirmed, and there were others that they reduced or eliminated. Um, due to the appeal, so uh, it's a good process. Alrighty. 
Council uh, considered a resolution authorizing the EDA to expend funds for the business grant program. This is something we've been talking about for several weeks now. We've done yeah. multiple stories and we've gotten a lot of businesses here to participate in this in this time of need for them. Yeah, yeah, it's why I wanted to, to make a note of this. So we have the Coon Rapids Business Relief Grant Program, which yeah. you, you mentioned you've, you've done a lot of stories on. Yeah. And um, so far we've had 72 businesses apply for this. Yeah. Um, and applic uh, you can continue to apply online through um, Friday, September yeah. 18th. So I wanted to make sure that, that businesses were aware of the fact that it's still open. Um, you, you know, we, uh, we allotted, 1.6 million dollars to this program um, yeah. for uh, small businesses with less than 100 um, workers. So okay. it's a good opportunity for some businesses, uh, smaller businesses, to be able to recoup some of the costs that they've endured, you know, through the hardships that they've had through the pandemic. Yeah, and there's certain rules they have to prove economic hardship and all that. Uh, but this is money that came from the Federal CARES Act. Yep, Federal CARES Act money. Uh, the city of Coon Rapids was allocated $4.8 million yeah. um, for the different things that, that we have um, that, that the city itself is going to have to um, take on. But right. we, the city decided $1.6 million um, would be allocated to the businesses. So... Um, we're, we're more than happy to support that, uh, definitely support the businesses and know it's been difficult for them um, during this pandemic. So it's really, really nice that we can use some of those federal right. dollars locally and you know that they're, you know, they're getting yeah. directly to the businesses in these grants. So good program. Yeah, great to be able to help support them as they still try to recover here. Absolutely. Yep, yep. All right, council uh, consider a resolution providing for the sale of about $7.2 million in general obligation improvement, utility, and equipment bonds. This is something we do from time to time. They kind of look at rates and uh, we go out for sales or I don't, I don't know how bonds work totally, well, but I know we save money usually in these deals. We don't, we, we have Ellers <laughs> that, that um, you know, they're our financial consultants and, right. and they do a phenomenal job. They help us with the sale. So this sale will go out uh, October 7th. They anticipate that the interest rate on this will be, I think it was like 0.966 or something. So it's under 1%, Crazy. which is just really a good rate for us. I mean, we have a good rating, um, a good credit rating as a city. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we can, we can yeah. get these better rates, which obviously saves money for us, uh, in the long run borrowing. Uh, the, the, we do this pretty much every year for the street re reconstruction. Yeah. Um, so that's not uncommon. Uh, so p a portion of this is for street reconstruction and a fire engine. And another portion is for, uh, also it's part of the street reconstruction, but it would be more for the, um, uh, you know, uh, water main work that yeah. will go along with that. So there's a lot of water main work that will mm -hmm. go on. That's 3.3 million. And, um, and you know, of the, the, of the initial um, 3.8 million for street recon, recon programs, yeah. um, those dollars are paid back um, through uh, the general fund or, or general levy. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they figure over a 10 year period, it'll be about $327,000 a year. Okay. Um, to make those payments back. And then the 3.3 for the water main, that, that money comes out of the water fund and that's water revenue. So that, that's how that gets paid. But they're both on a 10 year cycle, so. Okay. So obviously, the, I mean, as we're hearing interest rates are low, it's a good time to do good, this. Good time to do that. They did bring up last night, I thought it was interesting because I wondered then why don't you just keep, as they go down, just keep refinancing everything. But it sounds like there is, you can only do it at a certain point when the bond is called due yeah, every yeah. so often. So yeah. it's not like you can do everything every year. Exactly. And and we've already done some of it. You know, yeah. last year we did that to, um, to take advantage of the lower rates. Uh, you know, there, and so if you already have a lower rate, uh, there's, there's a point at which, you know, it doesn't make sense to do it because yeah. there, you do incur costs in, in the refinancing. It's like so. refinancing a home. Yep, absolutely. You got to weigh absolutely. both. You got to weigh both, right. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then there was a discussion brought up by Council Member uh, Griskoviak regarding about our outstanding debt uh, and wanting to sort of have a work session maybe you kind of determined to talk about that. I know there's a couple people that brought up kind of looking at our long-term debt. Yeah, I, as I recall, um, Council Member Wells was hoping that that conversation would be in January. Right. Once he's done, <laughs> yes, yes. But, um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, Council Member Griskoviak uh, had some good points and it's just, again, we, we have a good rating, good credit rating. We have a good solid, uh, um, you, you know, our, our debt 
the way uh, Ellers looks at it, they you know they they've analyzed this. They do it every couple of years right. where they look at the the debt the, that the city has, and and I want to say it's somewhere around sixty million dollars of debt, um, like and 60, yeah, yeah, something like that. And and so they they're very comfortable with where we're at with that. Um, I, you know, I, I know that um, Councilmember Griscoviak said I think we we end up. Uh, of our general fund, there's uh, a million dollars that we pay on interest, right. you know, um, or to service these loans every year. So you know, it, it makes sense to to take a good look at it and see yeah. if there's anything else that we can do to make sure that we, we, you know, we don't get ahead of ourselves. There are some big things coming up right. that we've talked about, um, Fire Station 3, um, we're, we're you know, we're going to have to do some bonding there, I'm sure, yeah. to get the funding for that. Um, so there are things that are coming up that we need to be mindful of. So yeah, it's good to good to be thoughtful of that. So right. Well, like you said, our credit rating is good. So yep. obviously, we're that is debt is something they take into account. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So yep, we're very solid in all of that. We're a very financially well-run city. Yeah. All right. That's all from our September 15th meeting. Let's jump back now to our first meeting of the month, which again took place on September 1st. Uh, one of the first items there we want to talk about uh, was approving a final payment for the Lions Coon Creek Park. We don't always talk about final payments, but this was a big project and it's complete. It's complete. And that's really why I wanted to, to mention it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of construction going on on Hanson in front yeah. of it right now. So it's a little hard to tell that it's complete. Yeah. I drive Hanson all the time and um, it wasn't it wasn't real obvious that it was. So I, I in fact, I made a phone call to make sure that it was, <laughs> that it was open so that we could make mention of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's available, uh, it's open, and uh, I guess it was probably a week ago that I drove by on a weekend and yeah. there was a lot of activity going on there. So. so people are able to use it now. We were supposed to have one of our summer meetings in the yep. park there, which obviously was canceled with COVID. So yeah. uh, I imagine maybe at some point we'll do a ribbon cutting, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. People yeah. are out there enjoying it at least. Yep, people are enjoying it. I, I have not visited the park yet since it's been redone. Um, yeah. Just viewing it from, you know, from uh, Hanson Boulevard, but it, it looks nice. Yeah. So and I'm I, excited about I that. I saw, I told you, the Lions Club the other day. Within the last week or two, I know I saw a picture of them. They installed a new, like, cool lion bench. Yeah, that's great. So we'll that's have to great. check that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll have when to we check that out. Definitely. Too. Yep, that sounds great. All right. Council adopted a resolution uh, accepting CARES Act grant funding for election related costs, kind of what we were talking about. We got an allocation from the CARES Act and now yep. all this money kind of goes to different things. Yes. So, um, so I, I I've been an election judge over the last couple of years, and I, I, I was a judge during the primary. I wasn't on the ballot, so I'm able to do that. And in fact, I will be an election judge for the general, but um, but outside of my ward, of yeah. course. So, uh, yeah, so you, you see firsthand the different ch changes that had to be made because of uh, the pandemic. Uh, we had plexiglass in front of us. There was extra tables. Um, everybody had to use a, a pen, so we had to have a, a lot of pens. And during the general election, of course, that'll that'll be something we weren't reusing any pens. Um, so th there's definitely extra cost. Uh, another thing was curbside voting, something that's been around for uh, for I, I want to say ever, but it's been around for yeah. a while, uh, but not used very often. But of course, during this COVID, we had extra people outside, and we had two people that were greeting. And so when they would see people getting out of their vehicle, maybe it was an elderly couple or uh, whatever, they, they would approach them and, and ask if they wanted to do the curbside voting, which worked out really well during the primary. It was probably nice that we had that, that, right. that you know, where we could do that, yeah. um, kind of the trial run to, mm -hmm. to see how that's going to work. But, um, but that, again, that, that's all extra cost to the city because they're going to need extra election judges to help out in that. Uh, but this this grant or this allocation, um, specifically thirty one thousand uh, dollars, is for election expenses. So it'll be nice to have that money. Okay, and maybe I read out. it wrong too. Like this is not necessarily our allocation from the CARES grant. The county got some probably because it yeah, kind of funnels to them for it, elections. It was it was like two hundred and forty thousand dollars or something that yeah. the county got, and our share of that, of that was thirty one thousand. Okay. Yep. All right. Council uh, approved a preliminary and final plat. This is for Egret Station 10122 Egret Boulevard and also flexibility for a drive through. Uh, what we're talking about here is a sort of new concept for caribou coffee. Yeah, so it's a caribou cabin. 
It's a very small, I, I want to say it's 600 square feet uh, the building right. is. Yep. It's, it's mm -hmm. very small building. Uh, so there's no in, inside seating to it at all. There's There will be a patio. So there's patio seating. Um, the drive through is kind of necessary because, of course, because there's no inside. Right. You, there's a window. You, there's a walk-up window and a drive through um, The drive through required flexibility because it was outside of um, Port Riverwalk. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the planning commission that does a great job of vetting issues out and stuff uh, mm -hmm. reviewed it, and they recommended that um, that it its approval along with the city staff. So uh, it was a pretty easy approval for uh, you know the council to make. Uh, we're very excited to mm -hmm. see this go in there. Uh, you know, you got the Central Homes development right across the street from it. So this is basically on the corner of um, Egret and Coon Rapids Boulevard. Uh, you know, kind of be behind the, the Coon Rapids Dam sign yep. that's out there and the, the, the garden that's out front yep. right along the boulevard there. Um, and uh, just nice to see some new development along the boulevard. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, in, in all of the years that I've been involved, it seems as though that's been one of the major issues. Even in our survey that we did in yep. 2016, that was a big thing for residents is to see revitalization of, of the boulevard. So this is just, you know, a really good item to see where you've got a business that's deciding that, hey, that's a good location. I want to I want to build there, so, you know, especially like a caribou. That's that's great to see. Yeah. And so the location, I think, is perfect. And yeah. with all the commuters needing their coffee on Absolutely. their way to work, it's, Absolutely. it is a good location. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Very excited about that. All right. So construction could begin this fall or I never heard. I'm so. not sure exactly when it would begin. I'm yeah. sure they'll uh, get it up as, I, as soon as possible. I would think so. <laughs> yep. All right. Council uh, adopted a resolution amending the capital equipment fund. This is sort of a budget related item. It is a budget related item. Um, it, yep. So they're moving dollars into, um, you know, into the 2020 budget so that we can purchase these items. Um, they wanted to purchase them early because one, there was an uh, opportunity for a slight savings in okay. purchasing them early, but also, so the items are, um, you know, sidewalk tractor, they're planning on renting a John Deere tractor, and then they would purchase two HLA snow plows or plows. Okay. And these are these plows that if you go out and, and, and view them, um, they've got all these YouTube videos of this as well. Yeah. And they're just really nice plows with a remote control. You can, um, you know, position them in all these different positions. Yeah. So uh, the main focus of these new plows uh, because one of them is for a front end loader, the other is for the John Deere tractor that we'll be renting, um, is to, to plow the cul-de-sacs. And I live in a cul-de-sac, so I know the difficulties yeah. in, in plowing them. And, you know, and the, the complaints that neighbors right. or uh, residents have uh, often with, um, with the piles of snow in their, in their driveways from, um, from plowing them. So it'll be nice to see um, the new plows and, and how they work and hopefully... Uh, Hopefully that reduces complaints of, of uh, the plowing in, in cul-de-sacs. Yeah, because do they for cul-de-sacs do they do it? Do they ring out the thing first and then leave snow in the middle? They they do, um, and it, at times they'll just ring it out so they can they can have any plow that'll go through and just do that. Yeah. But um, and then then they usually have the front end loader that comes in and it'll take all the snow and you know okay. they, they the front end loader is able to maneuver a, a lot differently than the others and yeah. um, and it, generally speaking they'll they'll push snow up into yards too if there's a lot of snow yeah. in the center they they make sure that they kind of pile it up and then push it up into some of the front front okay. yards i mean there's there's usually a yard or two in a cul-de-sac that is enough space that you know they can push the snow into the yard. okay but they eventually get the cul-de-sac clean yep, yep, just like they, a regular road yep, absolutely okay. yep so these new ones will maybe allow them to do a better job i think of so that. i think yeah. so yep that's okay. the, it'll be interesting. I work from home, so I, I get to see them in action all the time. Yeah, now you're at home, so you record us some yeah. <laughs> cell phone video. <laughs> right, exactly. We'll share that the next uh, after the next snowfall. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> uh, while we're on the topic of budgets, uh, council adopted a resolution uh, adopting the preliminary 2021 tax levy. Yeah. So um, I think the main importance of, of this is, you know, it's 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 the proposed. So. Yeah. Um, at this point, um, it can't go up, but it can come down. Right. Uh, currently, the proposed, it, it initially started out as being a zero uh, increase. Uh, there were a couple of items that were added back in. 
um, two police officers and a um, and a an employee for the fire department. So uh, th those items increased it a little bit. So I think we're seeing a. Uh, an increase over last year of about around two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is still under one percent. Mm -hmm. Now, again, like I said, the budget can't go up, but it can come down. So there's there's still a few, you know, there will still be a few discussions about items in there. There's still, you know, we still have a few months yet before it needs to be finalized. Right. So uh, that gives us a little more time to, you know, see assess things. Um, as far as the pandemic is concerned, uh, I, I know initially um, the property taxes came in the first half of the year very strong. In fact, they were over 100%. Um, uh, but, you know, we, I don't think we'll have the, the second half um, property taxes in before we have to make any decisions. But, but there will be some, you know, maybe we'll have some other information uh, at that point so uh, we can decide. But, but uh, really... Nice effort by the by the staff to be able to come in as low. I mean, as you know, the the general um, the, the the general levy ultimately goes. The majority of it goes to to pay for the the um, the general budget, yeah. and the general budget is about eighty percent staff. Right. Um, you, you know, so you've got your um, you got your um, colas and you've got your um, insurance payments, yeah. you know, yeah. that increase. So very difficult to keep things flat. Um, so really kudos to the to the staff for being able to do that. Yeah, and that was council's goal was to try to keep it as close to zero as possible. Absolutely. With kind of our economic uncertainties and stuff going on now. Right, right. Um, yep. But that doesn't always mean, and that's the whole property tax aspect, everyone's home kind of appreciates at a different time. So even with a 0%, some people will see their taxes go up while others might see might a see, flat or might even Might see a, a flat or, or even maybe a slight decrease. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So, and, it, and it's not certain of how that will pan out, but um, but certainly the hardest hit over the last few years have been those homes, you know, our Thompson homes that are kind of those starter homes. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've got, oftentimes you've, you've got people that have been living in them a long time or new people moving in and, you um, and uh, you know, starting family, and, and they've really been hit pretty hard over the last few years. And hopefully, this year it works out where yeah. those are the ones that aren't hit as hard. Because um, those values are jumping. Because yes, those quite a values bit. have increased yeah. significantly. On the one hand, it's nice to see those the value of their homes increasing. Right. On the other hand, because of that, they take a bigger chunk yes. of um, of the the levy. So that's how that works. All right. Well, we could take a whole show probably explaining property taxes yes. and how it all works. Uh, I'll leave that up to Council Member Demmer. He yeah. does such a nice job of that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring him in to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that is all we had on the, uh, those uh, council meetings to talk about. Uh, before we go, I want to quickly mention Night to Unite was pushed back. Uh, it's normally the first Tuesday in August. Uh, it was pushed back due to the pandemic to the first Tuesday in October. We did have some folks register for it, uh, but the decision has been made to kind of cancel the usual police and fire visits uh, due to the pandemic still. Uh, but they plan to do a virtual kind of online event for Night to Unite. So check that out on Tuesday, October 4th. I believe from around 4.30 to 7.30 is when some of that stuff will be happening. Okay. Uh, but they didn't want to have the police and fire doing the interaction at the neighborhood gatherings. Uh, right. Folks can still have their own parties and own gatherings right. uh, on their own, maintaining you know the, the guidelines that the state calls for. Absolutely, yep. But I uh, just wanted to mention that before we go. Yeah, 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 it's unfortunate. Uh, it's always nice. Um, Chief, Chief Wise always does a, a nice job of, uh, of you know articulating the point of um, how important it is for neighbors to get out and get to know each other. Uh, you know, to take time to, to, to meet. And, you know, often it's, it's done with a meal and that's a little bit harder to do this time around. And, and certainly the city has done such a nice job of, um, of sponsoring the event with, with uh, police and fire being able to, yeah. uh, you know, to go out to as many of these parties as possible. I, I think in the last three years, I've been able to ride along with the fire department and, and I think we've hit probably at least 10 um, different parties, you know, each night. So it, it's really is a, a great opportunity, and and um, I'm I'm glad that we're doing something at least this yeah. year. Um, but uh, hopefully next year things will be a little more normal, and, and we can get back to to getting out and having those events. Um, and uh, you know, uh, 
connecting with our neighbors. It's so important for us. So yeah, and we, we've learned and we've taken some of that for granted. So yeah, yeah. Whenever absolutely. normal happens again, yes, yeah, be let's, great. Hope, let's hope it's soon. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I have. Unless there's anything else you want to add? I, nothing I have. All right. Well, thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you at home for watching, and we'll see you back here after our two meetings in October.